Hey, me and my homie Kari Paukola, we once again made a short photo trip. We went to this small island called Kylmäpihlaja. It's about one hour boat ride from the coast of Finland from a town called Trauma. Uh, the island has a nice sheltered harbor. It has a really nice sea view, open sea, a bunch of angry birds and a neat lighthouse. And the loud lighthouse has been converted into a hotel with a few rooms, so we stayed overnight there. Took some photos. Looks like this. It's a small island, so I thought that you know it's easy for me to carry around a little bit more equipment. So this time I took my Hasselblad arsenal with me. I have this dedicated Hasselblad bag, which easily gets pretty heavy. I mean those Hasselblad lenses and bodies, they are pretty heavy. Um, I had my 500 cm. And most of the pictures I took with my Planar uh, f3.5 100mm lens. Now this is a little bit tighter being 100mm than the typical 80mm f2.5 that you see as an all-arounder uh, on the nose of a Hasselblad. But you know this is, it keeps me honest, it's probably approximately comparable to 60mm lens on a full-size sensor or 35 millimeter camera. So it's a little bit more tight than a normal lens. You know, some people say that this is the best lens uh, that's available for Hasselblad. And I like it a lot. In addition, I had my 50 millimeter Distacon lens F4. This is an excellent sea view landscape. You know, all that kind of stuff lens. And then I had my 150 millimeter sonar. Now this I don't use that much. It's actually a very good portrait lens, but you know I didn't take any portraits this time. Uh, I took both color uh, pictures and black and white. As you know, I like more black and white, but now I knew that there will be a sunset. I guess there's a sunset every day. Hey, 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 hold, hold on a second, hold on a second. Come in to think of it, it's not true. I mean, if you go above the Arctic Circle in the middle of the summer, 
There's no sunset. It doesn't happen every day. There may be long period of times when the sun doesn't set at all. And if you go to the North Pole, there's only one sunset a year. I just wanted to make this clear for you flat earthers that, you know, the uh, uh, world is round and if you... Just think about it. It doesn't happen every day. Just wanted to make this clear. Yeah, but this time I knew that the wind is gonna calm down and it's gonna be clear skies and all that. So I was expecting nice sunsets and for that I thought I'd gonna take some color pictures. Portra 160 and for my black and white I of course used my Ilford FB4 Plus, which is my favorite summer black and white film. You know, Hasselblad is perfect for that kind of a dual job or mixed personality because you can change the back. So I had one back dedicated for FB4, and then I could change it to another back and shoot some color. So basically, you can do with one single camera you can simultaneously shoot different films which is one of the benefits of such a modular system. By the way, any other interesting trivia is that my Hasselblad 500 is labeled uh, 500C but it's actually a CM. Hasselblad changed the model in 1970 and they started to make so-called CM model. CM model had a few advantages, most notably an interchangeable focusing screen. But it took them a while to see that they also need to change the kind of the model name. So there was a short period of time, uh, a small patch of cameras that were made um, under the new specs. So this is a CEM although it is branded as a C. 1970. And you know, a, a little bit of customer advice. A few months, maybe a year ago, I found this Chinese online store that sold Hasselblad parts and Hasselblad gear. And I went and purchased a focusing screen. And if I'm not totally mistaken, this was probably no more than maybe 20 euros or so. I, th I, st I thought that's dirt cheap. So I bought it. And, and this is how you actually change the focusing screen on, on a Hasselblad CM or, you know, 70s C models. You can just pull it out from here. And you can change a new focusing screen. And when I put it on, uh, to my surprise, it was like a night and day. It was so clear and bright. And I was so excited. But then I went and started to take pictures with it. And the funny thing is that you can't really focus with this. Everything seems to be in focus. I don't know what's the physical characteristics of this screen. It is extremely bright, but it won't let you to focus because everything seems to be in focus. So don't buy those cheap Chinese Hasselblad screens unless you want to shoot something like this. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the black and white pictures taken with my Hasselblad first. They look like this.
Okay, then, then later um, I started to take more color pictures. I mean, color is a challenging format because you need to take into account the, the, the color of the light and more often than not for me it is a distraction. It's just me. It's my challenges in sort of trying to look at the composition and, and shades and storyline and then in addition to everything else try to manage the color it's a little bit too much for me I, I took color pictures like this Uh, those were the Hasselblad pictures. Then I, of course, I also had something else with me. I had my pinhole camera, Leroy. This time I didn't take my super wide Hasselblad with me. Instead, I thought I'm gonna do some super wideies with this. Uh, for that, of course, I also needed a tripod. By the way, even with my pinhole camera, most of the pictures I take without the tripod. I just... This is such a challenging thing for me. Um, I took uh, pictures uh, with two films, two film types. The black and white pinhole pictures I took with Fomapan 100. Very nice film actually, reasonably priced sheet film. I use this a lot. And then, if, you know, color pictures I took with Provia 100. Here's a little bit customer advice to you too. When you buy expired film, this expired already 1999. So you gotta know a little bit about how films expire. This is a color positive film and this expires totally differently than color negative. For example, adding exposure time doesn't apply for color positive film. Fuji, Fuji, Fu, Fuji, Fuji in particular has a tendency to start to tilt to magenta, kind of a purplish gray, and it is really difficult color to manage, even if you use Lightroom or any digital aids, because it's just something about the magenta that is difficult. So I've noticed a few tricks you can do with this and my favorite trick is to cross develop this. So instead of developing my expired Fuji color pictures with E6 liquids, which are for the color positives, I developed this using C41s, which is meant to be used with the regular color negative film. That's called cross development. So I turn these color positives into color negatives, and when you do that, then the magenta shift moves into shifting and, and turning more green. And that green is much more pleasant to my eye, and that green also is easier to manage with uh, in post processing. There's also another benefit, since I already made C41 liquids for my Portra, now I had the patch ready for my Provia, so I didn't need to make any, you know, E6 liquids, lazy me. Uh, I took these kind of pictures with my Lero. Hey, what a nice trip. Thank you so much, Kari, once again. I mean, you always organize these trips. You you book the hotel and you book the ferry ride and, and everything. And I 
I just show up with my gear and the aperture fully open. So that's always enjoyment for me to, to ride with you. It's also extremely interesting to spend some time together and fully concentrate on photography. And there were multiple occasions where uh, Kari was looking at something and taking a photograph of something that I didn't see a picture there. But he took a picture and then showed it to me and I was like, wow, I didn't see that at all. Like he takes pictures with digital gear, so there is this show and tell. Anywho, so uh, it's, it's fascinating to see how differently you can look at the world and then you can learn from, from each another. And also, you know, just talk about photography and talk about life in general. So we took a lot of pictures, maybe a few too many. Uh, color, black and white, pinhole, Hasselblad, all kind of stuff. What's my favorite of these? This is my favorite. It has everything in it. <laughs> See you later.